Okay. Here we are, back on the road. Not streaming today, because streaming stressed me out yesterday. Or the day before yesterday now. So what we're just going to do... Um, a little bit of... Playing. In a... Standard game. Oops. Gotta turn the... Had to turn the volume down a little. For the input. Now I think... That really old error that this game used to have regarding every time you spawn in um, new junk spawns. I think that's what has happened. And I have a bunch of crap. This game is shockingly playable. Like you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily think that it was because well it's uh, low fidelity graphics, uh, kind of a, a simplified uh, arc. But I think the secret to this game uh, is its play loop. You are constantly attempting to improve your situation. You're constantly moving forward. Um, and that can be a very attractive um, game loop. I kind of like it. Okay, so let's see if any of this new junk has spawned anything good. I doubt it. Empty. I might want to set the, the saving rate down a bit. Don't need gasoline. Okay, it looks like I can't change how often it saves. And... It looks kind of like crap right now. Not the uh, not the actual graphics, because the graphics look the same, but more or less. But uh, the uh, the blur effect, motion blur. Any kind of motion blur gives me a headache. Okay. What are these? The hands just appeared? That was giving me the finger! Okay, let's just uh, keep moving forward. Run, sit down. Uh, can, can stick contextualized keys would be much nicer in this game. Oops. I, I shut off the... Uh, the a parking brake too soon. Yeah, it looks like the flame frame rate's stuttering a bit. Let's fix that. I don't know if that's any better. Head movement's smooth, but it just seems like the uh, the driving is a little herky jerky. I don't know. We'll deal with it for now. So, on with the... Oh, I guess it's getting better. Oh, once I moved away from the um, uh, the point of interest, it improved quite a bit. Look at that. Now, what I'm in the mood for is a... Um, an oil tanker ship. An oil ship. It would be super nice right now. But I don't know if we're going to find it. We're only going 16 frames a second? 17? Either the game doesn't really need all that many, uh, all that high of an FPS to look okay, or there's seriously something wrong with the, the processing, but. Seems smooth. I don't know. I am not sure if the brakes on the trailer are engaged. I'm not going to get out and check until I get up the hill. 
Anybody who's ever dri driven a, uh, uh, a large semi, um, you know that if you're traveling, if you're actually moving, don't stop. If you're getting bogged down, don't try to, you, you're, you're probably not going to be able to, to, uh, to downshift quickly enough. And, uh, uh, you'll probably just get stuck on the hill and not be able to get back up. You'll have to, you have to back all the way down and then take another drive, take another run at it. I'm not sure, uh, how far you have to go. I haven't watched too many of these videos, to tell you the truth. I kind of hated this game when when looking at uh, other at other um, other videos of of the, of the game because it just seems so basic and so plain. But I don't think it's trying to be anything else. I think it's just trying to be what it is, which is just a waste of time with a few mechanics to distract you. It's not trying to be a flashy game. It's not trying to be overly innovative. I think they're very much taking the concept of the long dark, which is, you know, survive and continue for as long as you can. Reducing it a bit, so, you know, and giving you a goal, go to your mom's house. And, um, improve your situation and it it's doing it very well um it's not terrible to look at the it sometimes you're fighting with the um with the physics engine and uh and again the contextual buttons needs i think needs a lot of work on them but it's not one of those games that you get mad at very often i've got my i got my 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 pepperonis hanging on the on the on the bench there, um, I I was using the uh, the articulated bus for a while, so that was the first one I came across. But now I'm onto this one. Before that was the the uh, uh, the box, not the box truck, but the, uh, the the pickup truck, and before that was the default car. And uh, I'm probably going to stick with the bus because it gives me a lot of storage space. As you can see back there. I've got myself a, a tanker be hauling behind me. Which I've chosen to put water in. Or not water, sorry. I've chosen to put diesel in. I was deciding whether or not to put water in it. Because the bus has uh, quite a bit of, um, of uh, fuel tank. Fuel storage. But it also eats fuel fairly hard. It, um, it's, it's not, doesn't sip fuel. And, uh, I want, this is my first playthrough. I, 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 I just got the game. I, I haven't had it for very long. Uh, so this is my actual first playthrough. I played it before on, um, let's say a friend's copy. Uh, um, and I hated it. I played it for like five minutes on like screw this and never went back to it. Uh, then I watched a YouTuber play quite a lot of hours into it. Well, like a lot of hours. Um, and I thought, you know, this looks a little more enjoyable than I thought. You don't have to think. It gives you a lot of time to talk. It's it's the perfect game where you just, like, just vlog while you're doing it. I usually vlog while I'm, while I'm streaming, talking to nobody in particular, and if people drop by, I'll have a conversation with them. But, uh, I guess this one just, you know, lets you point the vehicle in one direction and shoot the shit. Which is... So I was, um... I was a, a truck driver for a while. I've, I've been many things. I've changed my career a whole lot of time, times. I'm not happy. Uh, I'm not a happy person. After about two and a half years, 
working a job, I'm like, I don't ever want to do this again. I've got my fill. Go to hell. When I was a teenager, I would help my grandfather. He was an electrician. Not in any 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 industrial sense, but like he uh, he was Catholic, so he volunteered for um, I have to stop and take a poop, which is adorable. So uh, get ready for some rude sounds. Um, how do I get out? There we go. So I'm gonna get up here. I'm gonna cop a squat, and then oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Let it go. Let it all out, buddy. Oh, oh yeah. Look, look at how much faster you. Look at that. Yeah. Come on. Let it all out, buddy. Oh, I'm yearning my face now. Oh yeah. Why am I not losing? Oops. I think I'm drinking my own urine. I was drinking my own urine. There you go. Does that feel better? Do you feel better, buddy? Oh, look at those big poopies. Yeah. Big poopies. I don't know why I'm talking to the to my avatar as if he was like a three year old and is 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 just started learning how to how to be toilet trained. Oh mm, yeah. So yeah, my grandfather, uh he was Catholic and he would um uh basically volunteer to uh to do free electrical work for um well basically nuns they were nuns not basically nuns they were nuns they were the uh the sister uh, i don't know what the convent was called i i think it had something to do with uh joan of arc um I think I'm not I'm not 100% sure but uh, he he would install lights and fix other things again nothing industrial if they had to when they when they bought a new building he was he had no responsibility um in building the building and when they were installing um electrical uh stoves he did nothing uh with that but or when they installed the fire alarm he did nothing uh with that but um um, when there was a malfunction in the fire alarm, he was the one that they called to go um, just investigate it and see what the fault was. Um, he was also, uh, he changed all the lights, like I said, any baseboard heaters, uh, anything like that. Any any le uh, electrical appliance that was already in situ. So he's basically the handyman. And uh, he retired early from, from being an electrician. It was... Um, the building shortfall in the early 90s or something, he decided to take early retirement. So, um, but he kept his license up to date so he can continue uh, working for the, for the nunnery. Anyway, so before that time and after that time, he would take me along as his apprentice to help him work. Uh, get him tools and go running for things and, and things like that, so... But um, it wasn't very often. It was like once a week, once a month, something like that. So I did that for years. And then, you know, I tried to be a business person and uh, I hated that. And I was a, a vending machine mechanic for a while. And after a while, I hated that. And I was a plumber for a while. After a while, I hated that. So... I am not content with uh, anything, really. I I want to change things up. I want to try different things. I want to do stuff. And I don't know why I brought it up. Probably something to do with this uh, uh, with this game and driving. Oh yeah, when I was when I. Uh, Driving a truck is probably the one thing that I did for the longest because um, I would get in and I'd be making deliveries um, and it would be between like Montreal, from Montreal um, to Peterborough and uh, in Trenton. Um, every day um, 
usually the maximum allowable hours per week I would be on the road. Because um, you have to fill out forms and stuff like that. You have you can't just drive forever. You actually have to take breaks, even if you're not sleeping in the cab. I didn't sleep in the cab. I I went home every night. Um, so I would be able to phone people. Uh, they gave, they they made the mistake of giving me a cell phone, and I decided that. Uh, because they weren't paying me very much that uh, they could pay me in uh, in phone calls and I would phone the other drivers and we would sit on the phone all day long talking to each other while doing deliveries and you know hang up for a few minutes at a time to make the delivery then get back on the phone and then I'd phone my sisters I'd phone my friends and I'd listen to music other times, and it was it was it was quite a nice way to exist. Oopsie doodle! I thought I could go underneath that, but I guess I couldn't. Or over top. I think everything's okay. I should probably check to see if that's still secure because there was a double. There was a double bounce there. Double bounce usually means uh. uh uh, some I ran over something with the uh... oh no they're still there cool oh got a tangle oh the wieners have tangled oh my god gay wieners <laughs> gay wieners is there any other kind of wiener oh I forgot to check to see if the I can't be. Uh, I forgot to check to see if the if the brakes were on in the um, uh, the trailer. I'll do that at the next stop. My goal was to get enough fuel. Ooh, what's that? No, that's nothing. Uh, my goal is to get enough uh, uh, resources. Come on. Oh, there's one. Okay, obviously the trailer's brakes are not on because I didn't slow down at all. What's that? That's just a rock. I didn't slow down at all when uh, I put the parking brake on. I think listening to music was the best. Because it didn't matter what I was listening to. No one complained. No one told me what I couldn't and couldn't listen to. I was in the truck alone. If I didn't want to talk to people, I didn't have to. Interactions were with other people were limited to like 15 minute jaunts. So it was quite nice, quite nice. Anybody who wants to be left alone, who doesn't want to you know, interact with people, um, or limit their interactions with people, or who just want to have time to think. Be a truck driver. It's not hard work. Like, uh, if you meet a truck driver that says how stressful and, and hard it is, they're lying. They're, they're making it up. Um... The only stressful time I had in a truck was the first 20 hours of, of driving, the, the first 20 hours of ever being behind the wheel, and I was so tense, my back hurt, and I was... Uh, that was not cool. That was not cool. I don't know what just caused that. Is the trailer going? Oh, the trailer is com is completely jackknifed and staying jackknifed. That is not cool. Um, let's go check to see what's happening here. I think it might just be because the... Uh, oh, it's, it's actually wedged. That's what caused it. 
I think I need bigger tires on this thing, but... Now, does that mean brakes are off, or does that mean brakes are on? Okay, that must mean drive, and that means not drive. So, it's the opposite of what you think. So, this is brakes are, brakes are not on, brakes are on. Good to go, not good to go, I think. I definitely need bigger tires because they're while they're sitting on the ground they're not uh, they're not really doing much. I thought about being a bus driver for a while, but uh, no, nah, I'm not going to do that because you have to talk to people. Everybody's coming in. Everybody's asking for directions. Some people want to chat, and all you want to do is just drive and be left alone. I think that's the secret from employ of employment that employers aren't really getting. Oh, is that another one? That's another one. I am going towards the right run, right? Yeah, that is one. Um, is leave your employees alone. They'll be much more productive if you just leave them the fuck alone. Nobody wants to be bothered. Nobody likes the, the corporate culture. Nobody likes the office, the office, uh, uh, social structure. Everybody hates it. And even if they say they like it, they don't like it. Because there's, there's people they get pissed off at. It's just a bunch of school schoolroom bullshit, and nobody can wait to get home. If 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 you are uh, a business owner, and there is any way, any way at all, you can get your people out of the office and get them working at home, and nowhere near each other, you'll have very happy, productive people. And I don't think you have to worry too much about them goofing off at home. Because they'll get their work done, for the most part. And if they don't, and they're not productive, then, you know, you don't have to fire them either. You just, well, we'll call that a sick day. We'll give you a, we'll give you a, an unexplained sick day, and uh, you don't have to, uh, uh, you don't have to do any work. But uh, we're not paying you for it either. The, the the need to overcomplicate things by 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 business types is mind numbing. You don't need to you don't need to complicate things. As long as their as their productivity level doesn't seem to be in the toilet, you know, it's so much easier just to you know, let them do what they need to do. And if they want to kick back and watch a movie for an hour before they get back to work, or they want to finish a uh, finish an account at three o'clock in the morning, let them. Seriously, let them. Some of the places that I worked at, they got some of the most productive hours out of me. Um, after hours, at home, bored, logging into the computer, and then getting extra work done because, you know, I didn't have nothing to do, or I didn't want to do anything, or something. Um, there was an, an, uh, one place I was working at that they had an in-company uh, um, wiki, and I'd, I'd be up, I couldn't sleep at 2 o'clock in the morning, and instead of Playing a game, or, or, uh, uh, you know, watching a movie or a TV show or reading or something like that, I'd, 
I'd update the Wikipedia. I'd update the wiki and, and put information in and, you know, all kinds of extra work. But uh, they wouldn't let me, they wouldn't let me actually work from home. Do I want to go over there? That's just, that's just water and shit. I need fuel. I mean anything. You can do any work from home. Anything. So, let's say that you are a company and you specialize in um, customer support. Okay, you you have uh, incoming calls. You don't need them to be uh, sitting in a call center. And a lot of call centers have transitioned to this. Um, here in Canada, Rogers did it really early on. I think. I think people were working remotely for Rogers back in 2000. But all you need to do is make sure that they have a fast internet connection. So if you if you're actually an, an internet service provider, just give them a free connection. Like what the fuck is an extra, you know, 50 or 100 dollars a month? And if if you don't, then if you're not a, a an internet service provider, then just make a deal with a with an internet service provider. Again, if you're in uh, Canada, you can make a deal with Bell. Bell's a little shit, though. Or you make a deal with Rogers, Shaw, uh, Eastlink, any number of places. And because you'll be buying in bulk, even if it's 10, 15, 20 um, connections, you can get a, you can you can deal a, a, you can get a pretty good uh, discount deal. And then you get um, uh, like a just you just hire a um, an IT professional to get them to make up um, uh, uh, a VPN box that uh, that they can plug into um, that uh, makes a, a VPN to the to the main office so that so that everything is routed through your office instead of you know being routed um, uh, randomly anywhere. Give them a headset, uh, a decoder, a phone decoder, and then just uh, route calls to their to their uh, to their um, to their satellite phone. To the not satellite as in satellite in space, but satellite as in um, not directly connected to the main uh, the main device. And that is super easy with voice over IP and voice over IP, very good quality, low bandwidth. And they can just answer calls. You can use the exact same phone because all those phones that they that they use in call centers, um, they're all IP phones. And if you're if you're uh, remoting in with a with voice over IP, you you can't even notice the difference. Then the phone won't notice the difference. There's a little bit of a latency issue. You'll have like a one or a two second delay, but it is hardly noticeable i use voice over ip for my for my main main phone and it it runs off of, off of a cell phone um and uh, i notice the delay because i'm obsessive compulsive and i uh, calculate everything uh but nobody else would notice like somebody asks me a question and i answer and uh they feel like they get the answer immediately um, I ask them a question, they answer, and I feel that it's fairly immediately too. I can, I notice that it's a, a, a few seconds, but for the most part, people anticipate um, the the a lull in conversation. So they will, they will, their mind will fill in the blanks, and um, um, they won't pause to think about things, and. Uh, Sometimes I notice an echo, but I mean I notice an echo constantly when I worked at a call center, and like I don't know what more to say. You're, you you have secure access to all the resources because you've made them a, a basically a box that connects the to the voice over IP 
So if you fire them, you just invalidate the certificates on the on the box, and that's it. Uh, McDonald's is transitioning to this too. They're they're the the people who are who take your order are less and less often in the um, uh, in the restaurant that you're that you that you've rolled up to. Now I have lost the plot here a little with this. Uh, with this tanker I'm very close I know that but I can't see it no more so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get to the top of this little crest here I'm going to park up I'm going to have a nappy nap there we go park up There, and I'm going to have a nap in my chair. Take a look around. I need food. Got lots of food. Come on. These are for the trailer I'm keeping. Uh, which one is it here? Oops, that might have been... No, that's water. There. Doo -doo -doo -doo, you got mail. Definitely lost the plot. Let's see if I can't climb this. Yay! Boink. Okay, there is the tower that I've been using as a as a. Ooh, that's a new kind of tower. Yeah. So, I think I'm just going to get to the top of this hill. Oh, is that another... I think that may be a POI right there. Oh yeah, that's a double building. Okay, let's just get to the top of this, because I think it's probably there. And it's just, uh... It's just a forced perspective. Oh, I need to poop again! Oh, Yeah, come on! Get it all out. There you go. That's a good boy. There you go. Oh, don't you feel light now? Don't you feel like you can face the day? You've gone poopy. This is why I do not have kids. So, I've also noticed in this game that you don't really need to... Oh, there's an airplane. You don't really need to uh, follow the the road. Is that it? That doesn't look like it's it. Is that a new building? Let's go there. Like, uh, did you ever... Have you watched Office Space? Okay, I, I forget who's in it, but... Uh, that's by... Um, Judd. King of the Hill guy. Um, and and but Beavis and Butthead guy. And basically... Uh, he's got to go in, and he's got to make... He's got to fill in reports, and... He's got three managers and all kinds of bullshit like that. In in actual fact, in real life, he could probably do all of the shit that he was doing at, from home and be a whole lot happier doing it. Um, and be much more productive. And he wouldn't need the three um, supervisors and, you know, 
the company would need less office space and it would be much less expensive. It just, it just makes sense. Of course, a lot of stuff is being replaced with AIs now. That's the big, that's the big revolution in the world. Uh, McDonald's is doing that too. Or trying to replace, uh, the tellers, the, uh, not the tellers, the, the, um, the drive-through, uh, thing with, uh, a chatbot. And they'll eventually get it done. They'll eventually get, uh, uh get a completely person-free empty, uh, gas and oil. No, I don't need gas. Uh, completely person-free interaction when they can get away with it, because... Who wants to employ somebody when you don't have to? Like, I think it's funny that people complain about foreigners coming and taking the jobs, but they um, they really have nothing to say about the, uh, the automation revolution that's occurring. And uh, uh, there may be some business types that are resisting that because... Well, one, they want to be boss of, of real people, not robots. They just want people to do what they're what what they tell them to do because they're, you know, narcissistic, self-centered assholes. But they also know that cash flow will uh, immediately be hurt once you have a bunch of unemployed people because they've been replaced by uh, by Johnny Five. But, equally, there's, you know, a lot that uh, want to, um... Ooh, diesel. Oh, come on, diesel, 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 diesel. Um, let's put, let's stand this guy up so I know where I've stopped. And I, and I check them all. That's how I like playing games like this. I look at everything. I loot everything I can. That's what I like. Uh, it's also a lot cheaper maintenance to, uh, to employ robots. Japan, um, if you're a company that employs uh, robots, that you use a lot of robots, uh, and they're replacing a person, they have to, they have to pay union dues. The robots have to pay union dues. Uh, but they found that even though they have the robots replacing people, or they have the, the robots have to pay the union, it's still still cheaper than having real people. So the companies just, they don't, uh, they, they don't fight it. They don't argue with it. They just pay the fee and, and get on with it and not have to deal with a bunch of uh, protests or, um, you know, unhappy people. The union's happy because it continues to get dues, and uh, uh, the company continues to have record profits. That's, that's why such a small country like Japan um, still does as well as the United States, which is so much bigger with so many people in it. Because uh, they're efficient. They're exceptionally efficient with, uh, with their with their work, eth with their, not the, with their, well, yes, with their ethics, but with their, with their whole society is, is, is built on proficiency and, and stuff. This is annoying me. I need to get this up here. That might work. Oh, come on! Don't do this to me! Look, aren't I, aren't you your friend? Go. Oops, I forgot to open it. Maybe I can set this up here. Really gently for now. Boop. Maybe not. 
Maybe I can set it down. Open it real quick. Grab it. <laughs> I got you. Okay, so back to the grind. Um. I've seen these really great looking uh, farm bots. They're You don't even have to tell them to do anything. They just do it themselves automatically. They'll go check the field. And that's going to be the real revolution. Farmers, like, you ever see those signs like uh, farmers feed to feed cities, farmers feed families, things like that? They don't. And they haven't for a super, super long time. Um, factory farming has become uh, more and more popular and more and more uh, intense and uh, more and more your food is being um, grown and uh, and maintained by fewer and fewer people like there there was a time can I actually jump this with something in my hand oh I can um, there was a time uh, when it would take, you know, the entire population being agrarian to feed itself. But then, um, the plow revolution came about, and now you, and at that point you could start feeding a hundred people with, um, one person working the fields, or, you know, um, you could feed a thousand people with one person working the field, and then, you know, five coming in during um times of of intense labor and that's the way it is uh, this uh, now it's not even like that like i was about to say that's the way it is now but it's it's even less than that now now um they don't even need to come in for uh an intense harvesting period because uh everything has been so streamlined that uh uh they don't need helpers. Um, the uh, uh, the tractors and and all of the the accoutrement of the tractors they've been uh, they've been optimized to such an extent that one person can can uh, can operate it. And you know, do not take my word for it. If you want to know how easy it is to operate a farm go play farming simulator uh most of the people that i talk to say that it's it's fairly true to life there are very few um instances in the game where it's um it's doing something that you can't do in reality you can fast hot swap your uh, your appliances on your uh uh, on your tractors uh, very quickly now. You can decouple and, and recouple and reposition and all kinds of stuff at the at the, at the push of a button in a few seconds. So the, the amount of labor that has to go into it is, is much, much lower. And then you uh, you, uh, you till the field, you, you fertilize it, you sow it, you plow it, you do all the things that you need to do in one uh, tractor, one oversized tractor. It used to be that, you know, you have a bunch of different tractors and maybe you have a backup tractor on the side. Any maintenance, they just bring it into a maintenance place. Like, uh, farmers are really leading the charge for the right to repair because, you know, they want to repair their own vehicles and not have to deal with, you know, John Deere uh, forcing them to pay $100,000 just to just to change the oil. It's not that bad, but it's goddamn bad. But the the convenience is still there. There's still a there's still a, a huge convenience factor with how these things are purposely built, how they're they're uh, they're optimized to um, to uh, to cater to the lone individual because nobody wants to pay for employees they don't need. Nobody wants to. Um, uh, Everybody wants to optimize their income. So if you can get an appliance that doesn't complain, doesn't get sick, doesn't need time off, 
you know, whose whose wife doesn't have a baby uh, and want to spend time with that kid, then you're going to do that. And that's what everything's everything's been building to. McDonald's is a franchise. Don't you think the franchise owners um, want to fire everybody and still make the uh, uh, obscene amounts of, of income? Of course they do. And I lost the other... I lost where the other... Uh, is that it? No, I think I'm just going to give up on that one. Let's shut the engine off and just, just cruise. Um, like, wouldn't you? Just think about what you do for your job. And, and, uh, would you want to automate it? And I mean, people have done this. People have, you know, they've, they've taken careers in large tech firms and then, um, outsourced their work to, um, India or China or other places and, and, and get stuff done and be making, uh, twice the amount of money uh, or not, they wouldn't be making twice the amount of money, but they're, they're only, they only have to pay out half of their salary because, you know, um, doing the work, uh, other people, the, the other nations, uh, are willing to do the work for a whole lot less. Now, imagine if you could, if you can farm that out. One industry that's at real risk for automation that nobody ever thinks about is legal research, legal researchers. AIs are doing this now at, at an astonishing level and uh, basically what it means is is that the, the the computers oops the computers um, find out what laws are appropriate what uh, uh, what uh, um, what cases similar cases have been heard verdicts uh, it can cross-reference with the uh, 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 with the judge to see like what does this particular judge often respond to. Uh, what's this? Oh, paint. Um, yeah, I want this. I think I already have one, but I I, I want some permanent lights. There we go. I'm probably going to attach one on to the trailer, just so the trailer is all, always has a light on it. What's this? Oh, spray bottle! I think I'm going to put you here, buddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of anal about placing things. I can't use VR because I'm I'm very far sighted. So I, I even if I turn the uh, uh, if I turn the uh, the VR setter, I I set the, the 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 focal length as far as I can. I still can't see anything. I have to read at arm's length. It's it's nuts. I sit at my computer to read, okay, and I am I don't know three feet away from my computer screen. It's a big computer screen, not huge, but, uh, and, um, I can read perfectly fine from, from that distance. But, uh, if I were to move it closer, I wouldn't really be able to see much. Uh, yeah, but the, uh, the automation is, is taking away a lot. It's changing the dynamics of the world in in fundamental ways that, that people are just not prepared for and, you know, are not really um, contemplating. And, I mean, uh, people have this weird idea that um, computers will never, never replace them in, uh, will not be able to replace them in some ways because, uh, a person is, uh, so much better suited for one job or another. I hate to tell you this, but 
there are bots that are already uh, that are, are are writing news articles um, that are being creative that are writing music god damn it stop that just get in the box like uh, we might see the freeware version of stuff the things that uh, that are open source and you know um, you don't have to you don't have to pay for and they're they're great pieces of, of technology but the real uh, uh, industry uh, 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 trendsetters whatever okay, now this I'm gonna try to maneuver this around to face forward and then what happens if I do this I think I have to load it but that's okay it's still in my hand so that's better than nothing so there is stuff up here Like, whatever job you think you're doing that you can't be replaced with a computer, you're wrong. You can be replaced with a computer. Ew, gross! The, uh, the first instance of, you know, like, mass automation that got people um, all concerned and, and, and pissed off was, like, the Jacquard loom. It, uh, uh, it was actually the... You could, you could call the Jacquard loom the prototype for uh, modern computers because um, it used punch cards to... Uh, uh, to set which thread um, would be uh, would be used in, in each in a particular row for like textiles and so forth and uh, it put to well at the time kids out of business because you no longer needed um, a, a child to sit there and pull the right cord um, to um, send the shuttlecock across. It was just a uh, a push board that you that you could get a person to to just push and pull and push and pull all day long to make um, identical textiles. I think I'm gonna go for a poop. There we go. Now, I'm going to get some water. Because there's water in this place, I think. Yes, there is. Oops, this one is my... Oops. Can't wait to get more of those things so I can get rid of that. What do I wanted to put in here? Why do I have two of these? Oh, that's water. Oh, and that's water. They're both water. Hmm. Guess I'm stockpiling water. I can't remember making that decision though. So these jacquard looms, um, they were a revolution. And, uh, it, uh, it scared people back then. Led to the computer revolution. Not directly, but, well, no, I guess you could say directly. Because it's, it's a program that you're, that you're using. Okay. Now, there's supposed to be a way to secure these. So that you don't need to, uh, that they won't move around, but I don't know how to do that. I think it, uh, I tried using those steel bars, but 
I couldn't secure them to things, and the uh, uh, the big barrels they won't uh, they won't sit in the baskets. It'd be nice if you had like a welding tool that you could you could tack things to, or if everything you could you could tack everything down, like uh, you can tack other other uh, objects, but you can't. Um, so I was going to use Musk as an example. He wanted to automate his, uh, his Tesla plant, and he had difficulty, but they really did automate a lot. There are, there isn't as many, as many people in the, in the factory as, uh, as you might think for, a uh, a car company. Uh, 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 absolutely not as many as you'd have in like a, a Ford factory or something like that where people are you know moving things around and installing them because but uh, but that uh, that by no means means that uh, it's not it's not possible to get uh, uh, to get those things automated, to put windows into uh, uh, to frames and things like that. I mean, there there are automated um, uh, bricklaying bots and uh, um, like you name it. They're 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 coming out with something to uh, to make your job um, redundant. And I mean, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Like you might say, well, if you do that, then um, uh, you know you're going to have mass unemployment, and, and who's going to, you know, run the uh, run the world? Who's going to buy products? Who's going to do? There's solutions. There, they will come up with a solution. It may not. It may not be that uh, jobs are invented. It may be that you know, less, fewer and fewer people will be employed, or, you know, uh, more and more people do this shit, like entertain people. It, it could be that our, that our society will, um, uh, transition to, uh, leisure base, where, uh, everybody's job is basically to entertain everybody else, while a small number maintains um, a robot army, and that may sound utterly stupid, and it could end up being like that uh, episode of the original Star Trek series where um, um, people revert to a childlike state because they don't need to use their brains, but as long as the whole thing keeps going, as long as as, as everybody is at least somewhat content and you have the the, the the wealth hoarders of the world thinking that they need a trillion dollars for some fucked up reason. Um, then the party's not gonna stop. It's gonna keep going. Like, and that's that's the motivation. As long as people are, are reasonably uh, content with the with what they're getting, it's it's not gonna end. Money is is just a it's just an artifact that we've invented for ourselves. Back when you needed, you know, a whole lot of people to just feed a town, not everybody in that town did the same thing, you know? I wasn't just here, was I? I don't think so. Um... You can have, uh, like, if you look at, say, uh, a YouTuber, okay, what is the difference between a YouTuber and an actor? Not much. And yet, actor seems to be more of a legitimate job in people's minds than, than YouTuber or Twitch streamer or, you know, um, uh, 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 TikTok, uh, what do you call them? TikTokers? Um, and yet, 
there is a valid business model for uh, companies to make money and uh, people on top to make money on the on the on the talent and or labor of the people underneath them and you know you have some complaining about that and some going oh that's not a real job I like, just think of uh, dire straits money for nothing like this the the entire song is based on you know uh, somebody complaining about um, somebody being a, a rock star instead of uh, moving microwave ovens. And they make millions. The, the, some of the richest people in the world, not the richest people in the world, but uh, richer than most, are people who sit there and sing and, or, or goof around on stage or, you know, one way out of the ghetto for a lot of black uh, men was to become a rapper. That was their, that was their, uh, their goal. Become a rapper. I really think I was here already. And uh, make money and uh, and get out of your situation. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I'm. I think I went in a circle. Well, I don't think I went in a circle. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just going to get out of here. So, if 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 they uh, provide a service to civilization that, you know, people are happy with and people are willing to pay them for and, and, uh, and uh, keep them alive for, and very well, mind you, then why can't other uh, modes of value be used? Why can't, um, uh, and I mean YouTubers, there are some very rich re YouTubers, why can't they continue to, uh, to do the same thing? And why can't everybody do that with each other? You will, of course, have... Like, say you have a, a grocery store that's almost entirely operated, and they need, like, three people. The owner needs three people to work the store for them. Um, you know, one guy to make sure that the, that the shelf stocking... Ro the, the shelf stocking robot uh, continues to work properly. Um, one guy to manage the, um, the order robot and um you know one guy to deal with emergencies and then everybody just purchase uh, you have citizens who are just normal people who purchase from 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 that store and then that business model is done and they watch youtubers and youtubers watch other youtubers and you know the whole thing becomes cyclical and you may you may say that's stupid. That doesn't make any sense. If if nobody is, you know, down a hole in a mine pulling out um, a rock and slag to uh, uh, smelt the steel and things like that, and nobody's out on the on the fields working the the farms, then you know where does the um, uh, where does the value in any labor come from? Where does the, where, where does the the uh, uh, the value in in the work or, or or product or you know, why can't ev everybody just like own these uh, and run these these farms and and shit like that if it's if it's so easy? But that's not the point, and it's also made up, like it. You try to explain it to, to somebody, or you try to explain it to yourself, and it doesn't make very much sense. Try to explain the stock market to yourself. If you have somebody who uses the stock market, who plays the stock market, who, who makes a career out of uh, buying and selling stocks, they will tell you that it's, that it's, that it's, a, it's a real beast that... Um, um, has moods and they have hundreds of, of, 
of thousands of books dedicated to uh, describing how um, uh, how to interact with the stock market, but try to if you are a stockbroker, try to explain it to a layman, or if you're a layman, try to understand from a stockbroker. It will sound made up because you might think. Oh, a company stock, that company has, uh, makes money from that stock. No, no, they don't. You can have, uh, you can basically mint stock, uh, and then sell it to raise capital. But, um, people who play the market, people who, who buy and sell stocks, they don't like that because they consider that, uh, watering down their stock. It makes their stock less valuable. So then you might say, well, then where does the money go? Well, practically speaking, it goes nowhere. Um, people are buying and selling stock off of one another. Now, immediately at this point, most normal people are like, that's not how it works. That's stupid. That's there. There is in no way, shape or form is that true. I'm afraid it is true. Um, you you buy a commodity or you buy a piece of stock uh, for a company, you are buying it from someone else. A lot of times from some institution, but it's it's from someone else. It's it's it doesn't come from the company. The company can't set their stocks. They can split and merge stocks and and do stuff like that, but. They, they have no direct influence on uh, the, the value of their stock. They have no direct control over um, uh, um, who's going to buy and who's going to sell and how much is going to be bought and sold in a day. That is all for uh, the participants and the, the players to decide. They decide how much a particular piece of stock is worth they decide how much they're going to pay for it. They pay for it, and the company sees nothing in that sale. Uh, if a co company's stock price tanks to zero, um, there's really nothing investors can do. Like, as an investor, you have a vote in the company, but typically that doesn't mean anything. Nobody really votes for something. They might say that they do. They might you know, try to, to, to big up the, uh, the, um, uh, uh, the meaning of their, of their stock vote. But basically all the vote means, all the vote does is say you want to oust a, 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 um, a CEO. You can get all the stock people together, vote to, uh, cast a vote to see whether or not you want to get rid of the CEO and if uh, if you can get 50% or whatever to agree with you, then um, he gets replaced. If you can't get 50% to agree with you, then um, the vote goes nowhere and the person stays in place. So you're not the owner of that company. You are um, just one cog in a wheel. You are... And like if you if you vote in actual civic elections, you'll know how hard it is to get everybody to agree on something. So these stock votes happen the same way. Now you do have uh, uh, um, companies that own huge amounts of stock in other companies, but again, that's that's how it works. There's no real connection between the two. Originally, it was it was meant to you know you're actually you actually owned something physical, something real. You owned stock that was coming back uh, over on a ship, and um, uh, if you didn't have confidence in the in the captain bringing um, bringing the ship home to port and losing their uh, uh, losing all of their merchandise, then 
you know, there was a reason to to get concerned. And you could uh, you could sell your your stake, your stock, um, to somebody else before it got back before it got back to port because you think, well, they've been gone for a long time and uh, and uh, we haven't heard word from them and they, they were supposed to arrive back on uh, August 15th, but it's it's now um, November, so we could have lost this load. And you will have, you know, these, these people willing to take risk to buy the stock from somebody else at a reduced price because the gold and the silver and the wood of the timber the and the other uh, uh, accoutrement may um, may show up and then you will have a windfall um, and that sort of that sort of morphed into what we're doing now which is you know people pretending like they have some kind of uh, of, uh, of a valuable piece of paper to make decisions and, and, and affect the course of history and a lot of companies they just play it there's there's one stock uh, not one stock there's a lot of penny stocks that they will hype up their 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 uh, their company and their stock to get people to invest so that, that they can inflate the stock and then what they will do is they will go to investors um, and and banks and and so forth and they'll say um, we will give you um, one share at let's say 28 cents if you give us money that's it you just give us money and we'll give you a piece of paper saying that you own one share and that one share uh, is at 28 cents and uh, if that share matures in a couple months meaning that uh, um, regular people buy and sell or companies buy and sell uh, the stock and um, um, up the value you get to keep that money so the the, the company let's say sells a million pieces of stock at 28 cents so that's that's uh, uh, two hundred eighty thousand dollars they pocket that they invest it into the company and then the uh, the investment firm the bank they get uh, they get pieces of well it's all electronic now but uh, like uh, theoretically they get pieces of paper that say um, you own uh, 28 cents worth of a particular stock then over the course of a year or two years or however long the uh, the maturity level the the the, the agreement is to that uh, to that to that to that bond is uh, if it if it then goes up aha, if it then goes up and say it's worth more than 28 cents a share more than two two thousand two two hundred eighty thousand dollars then uh that big company that uh, that finance company that originally uh put the money into the into the company i'm saying company too many times can sell it for more uh, that's the wrong button i need r there we go uh they can sell it for more money and make a profit on it and that's how it works it's it's a it's a, a risk reward model and that is the only value that is the only point where um, some kind of service is being exchanged is when um, an investment firm um, gives cash or loans to um, um, the business for exchange for voting shares and sometimes not even voting shares and that's it that is really literally absolutely 100 percent is and if you think that makes sense if that's like some kind of a a, a reasonable business model you're nuts 
Because the whole the 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 whole thing is predicated on um, uh, a worthless uh, IOU being being traded back and forth. It, it's literally not tied to anything. It's not tied to the physical stocks. How much? How many vehicles a company makes? Um. If you look at a, a lot of different companies right now, um, like Tesla, Tesla stock a little while ago was worth uh, um, over a thousand dollars a share, and then it lost something like two hundred dollars uh, in value per share. Yet, nothing changed really. There's a little bit of bad press for uh, Musk. But the 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 change in value was purely perceptual. And that whole market, like, or, so one legitimate um, the value in the stock market is that due to changes in tax laws, uh, you can basically put cash in the market, and then as it matures, you don't have to pay for the maturity. Um, so. But you'd have to pay for uh, interest in a bank account. And you can do some clever trickery to, um, you know, shelter your money from from uh, taxes and asset forfeitures. Well, not so much asset forfeitures, but a asset valuations and things like that. So that has a value to people. But it moving up and down, totally meaningless. And that drives most of the world's economy. Now, you can't then turn around and say that everybody entertaining everybody else is not a, is, is not a, a meaningful model to, uh, uh, to run a society on. Okay, all I did was change the tires. All I did was change the tires. And... Um, let's wait until morning, because if I try to do very much right now, I'm going to lose it. I need to see what the terrain looks like to be able to decide what I'm going to do. So, it looks like if I go off to the right there, no, that's a little too high. If I go off to the left, yeah, if I go off to the left, that means I'm going to need to back up. Let's turn the engine on. Okay, uh, I want it to go that way. Nope, that was, uh, well, that was kind of the right way, but uh, let's go this way. Oh, here we go again. There we go. Now we've made it out of that quagmire. Now we'll go this way because this is a gentler slope. And then we'll kind of go up around here, up that peak and over there. So I might actually change back to uh, smaller tires. Because if this is what's happened with large tires, then... That's going to be annoying. And I'll just crisscross my way up. And, uh... We'll see what we can do from there. So, we we made up the economy. That, that's, that's the long and the short of that little rant there, is that... And we can, we can, as a people, run it any way we want. So, if we choose... Um, we could just hand people um, currency and say, do with what, what with it as you will, enrich the society as you choose fit, or don't. Um, more often than not, we don't, because just like those stocks, people want to believe that there's value 
in the currency they hold. They want to believe that they can exchange it for as much as many goods and services as they possibly can. But all it is is all it is all money is is a stock voucher for how well you think the world is doing or your country. And if you know anything about currency trading, then you know it's traded back and forth the exact same way. So it's not real. I I don't know what else to say. So if you think that, you know, that a change in the in the in the in the working habits of of uh of uh of people. Why is Okay, that break is on. I'm not even going downhill very effectively. Oh, no, I'm still going uphill. Oh, yeah. I should have stayed with the smaller wheels. Yeah, I should have stayed with the smaller wheels. Should have stayed with the smaller wheels. The next car I find, I'm stealing its tires. Yep, that was dumb. Anyways. Not sure what else to say beyond that. I guess that's pretty much about it, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah. 